Hey guys, it's Chris of Highline Guitars. What is the best way to register a blank when you're going to be doing two-sided carving on a CNC machine? This is actually a question that has come up several times uh, during the last couple of videos that I've made where I'm talking about building the solid body as well as the hollow body guitars. And folks have noticed that when I line up a blank on my CNC machine, what I do is I mark the center line on the edges of the blank all the way around. And then I line up those marks with lines that are engraved in the wasteboard of my CNC machine. Okay, if you're still trying to figure out how my alignment system works, it's pretty simple. I have this blank on the wasteboard here. And on each edge, I have drawn a line right at the center of that edge. And those lines, if you look closely, are lined up with a line that's engraved in the wasteboard. This line runs the entire length of the wasteboard, and it corresponds to the x-axis. And it's positioned exactly in the center of my x-axis. My machine has a working space of 48 inches. So I have this one positioned at 24 inches, right in the middle. Then on the side, you can see I have another line drawn on the edge and it corresponds to an engraved line that corresponds to the y-axis of my CNC machine. Now I actually have two y-axis lines engraved, one here, which is 18 inches from the front edge back to that line. Then I have another line up here, which is 24 inches. And the line that I'll use for the y-axis alignment just depends on the size of the blank. This one is small enough that I can, I can position it on this 18 inch line. And that just makes it easier for me to reach back when I'm clamping everything down. But like if I'm doing a neck through neck, I would probably have it lined up with that um, 24 inch line. But then I have lines on the other edges as well, and those lines are lined up with these engraved lines. And so once I have it lined up, I can clamp it down, I can do my CNC carving, and then if, if I'm doing two-sided carving, I just simply flip the blank over, line up the lines again, clamp it down, and do the other side. It's really a very simple method for lining up uh, the blank on the CNC machine in a known location. And then one of the other things that you might be wondering is, well, how does the CNC machine know where the blank is? Well, it's because I home the machine to this lower left corner. From there, I can jog it 24 inches over and then 18 inches back. And that places the bit right over the very center of the blank. And then I can um, probe the, the bit to get my Z axis lined up. Then from there, I simply jog it to the front edge. In this case, it's 15 inches to this edge. And then I jog it over half the thickness of the, or half the width of the blank, which in this case would be two and a half inches. And that puts the bit right on the lower left corner in the XYZ home position to start the carve. It's incredibly simple. And uh, some viewers wondered why I don't use what, has often been referred to as a pin alignment system. And others have wondered why I don't use positioning blocks for my blanks. Well, the answer is really pretty simple. The, the main reason is because my blanks are never the same size. They always vary. And a lot of that depends on the design of the guitar that I'm building. And of course, I never make the same designs more than a couple of times. Uh, it also has to do with the lumber that's available when I'm purchasing wood to make the blanks. And it varies often. And as a result, I can't always make my blanks to be exactly the same size. And for that reason, using either the pen alignment system or a block method of lining up the, the blank doesn't really make sense. Now, if I was making uh, blanks that were always the same size, then that approach would make more sense, and that's probably what I do. Now, to uh, come clean with this, I have tried all those methods before, but I found that they can actually be more time-consuming to use 
than the method that I'm currently using by drawing the lines, the center lines on the edges of the blank and then lining it up with the lines engraved on my wasteboard. And let me try to explain that a little bit more clearly. When you're doing a pin alignment system, what you're doing is you're drilling holes in the wasteboard that will accept pins. And these could be like, for example, a quarter inch diameter or uh, 6.35 millimeters. And those are placed um, oftentimes in the four corners or sometimes just in the two corners. And then what you do is you drill holes in the blank to correspond with those uh, pins. Then you would place the blank onto those pins and you'd have your blank positioned in a known location on the CNC machine. From there, you can home your machine and then jog to wherever you have your XYZ home position on the blank, whether it's at the lower left corner, which is what I often do, or if it's in the center. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this video, I would encourage you to click the thumbs up button down below. Do it right now. It's a great way to show my channel support and it doesn't cost you anything. But if you'd like to take your support to the next level, you can visit my eGuitar Plans web store or my Highland Guitars merch store. There's links in the description below. And any purchase you make there is gonna help support this channel so that I can keep making guitar building videos and sharing my knowledge and experience with you. You can also click the thanks button down below and leave a tip in the amount that you think is fair. But if you wanna get the most out of my channel, I would encourage you to click the join button down below and consider becoming a member. As a member, you're going to have access to videos just like the one you're watching, but with a lot more information and detail, and best of all, no ads. Now let's get back to the video. So you have to stop and think about what all that work entails. First of all, you have to drill the holes in a precise location on your wasteboard. Now that's easy to do with the CNC machine. That, that's simple. But then you have to drill corresponding holes in the blank. And if you're going to use your CNC machine to do that, you have to position the blank somehow to begin with. It's sort of the uh, which came first, the chicken or the egg. Uh, an alternative method is to measure and mark the position of those pinholes and then drill them with a uh, drill press. But you're essentially doing the same work. You're, you're having to measure and then drill. That's, that's a time-consuming process. So the method that I use of marking the edges of the blank and then lining it up with the marks engraved on the wasteboard is quick and simple. And then once I've carved one side, I simply loosen the clamps and flip it over, line up those marks and clamp it down again and go. I don't have to measure and mark and drill holes and hope that everything lines up. And then with the uh, block system, where you put blocks on the wasteboard and they're usually screwed down, that is, allows you to position the blank in the same spot when you flip it over, uh, you should be able to register. But like I said, all my blanks are different sizes, so it doesn't make sense to use the blocks. Every time I would uh, position a blank, I'd have to move the blocks to another location. That would have to be carefully measured and marked so I'm not really gaining anything. There's no benefit to it. And uh, the method that I've been using is what I settled on after trying a lot of different approaches and discovering that I was really not saving any time or making it any simpler. So I think the method that I use is without a doubt the easiest and simplest way to position your blank on the wasteboard so that you can do two-sided carving. And it's not just used for two-sided carving. I use it even for one-sided carving. Uh, for example, I'm going to be doing fretboards here in the next week, and I have to position the, the fretboard blanks in a spot that is going to be a known location. So I will measure and mark the centers on the edges and then position those relative to the lines that are engraved on the wasteboard. It's quick, easy, and simple. So um, I hope that this video makes sense and uh, will give you some food for thought. Uh, I think it's important to understand that just because you see something done on YouTube doesn't mean it's always the best way to do it. So you have to kind of think through all the steps that might be involved before you do them. And when you do that, you'll start to see that some techniques, though they may seem uh, a brilliant genius technique, maybe aren't. So 
Um, just think it through before you do it. Uh, kind of visualize the process in your head and you'll start to see that it isn't always what it's cracked up to be. So at any rate, if you enjoyed the video, as always, be sure to give it a thumbs up. That really helps this channel. It doesn't cost you anything. And of course, if uh, you want to take your support to the next level, you can do the things I mentioned earlier in this video. And of, until the next episode, as always, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for more of these guitar building videos.